All right, uh, welcome everyone to episode three of our Cocktails at Home series. This one's going to be winter warming cocktails. Thought maybe we were going to get lucky with a little bit of snow today to give everybody uh, a little bit more of a mood, but just turned out to be rain so far. Just a couple people trickling in here. All right, so I'm going to try something else. Um, today with the two camera settings and switch the dominant camera when we go into a, a demo mode and hopefully it works by with my luck it probably won't but we're going to give it a try um so we're going to be making three cocktails today we have a hot toddy a gin punch and hot chocolate uh on our to-do list we're actually going to make it in that order uh first i would just like to go through uh an unboxing make sure we have all the same ingredients in front of us. Uh, and if anyone has any questions about any of the ingredients, please don't hesitate uh, to, to speak up. Uh, you should also have your equipment list with you, sort of less traditional. We're not really using cocktail shakers uh, that much today. We will still use a jigger um, and glassware, but not the normal tools we are using. So with the first drink, uh, we have our alcoholic ingredients are uh, whiskey and allspice dram. We have our honey simple syrup and lemon juice. We have our chai. And then we also have some uh, tea bags as well. So with this, you have um, the chai is a chai concentrate that we dilute down with water. Um, you could also use water uh, in this. We're essentially making tea. I like to try to impart flavor as much as possible. So anytime you can use water, I'm trying to think about what can I use in place of water to, to give more depth uh, to the cocktail. Uh, so that is our, our ingredient list for the first one. Uh, we have a sauce pot. It can be any way you want to heat up uh, a beverage. So if you have a teapot, you can use that. If you have, I have this Nespresso um, frother, uh, which I'm just going to use on the heat setting, uh, or just a sauce pot on the stove to warm up the chai. Um, you're going to need a jigger for measuring out your ingredients, and then a glass to serve it in. Lastly, we'll need a peeler and our citrus, you have a lemon uh, in your kit. So that's everything we need for the first cocktail. Uh, any questions before we get started? Okay, let me make sure I have the chat up to see if anybody posts any questions in there. All right, so let me try and see if this works sharing the second screen here. Okay, so did that work? Are you seeing the demo screen or are you seeing a blank white screen? Blank white screen. Blank white screen, all right. I am Zoom illiterate. So we're just going to look at the second. So you have two. You have two screens listed as fearless restaurants. Um, the second one is where we have the demo from. So if you have the option on the top right hand of that screen, uh, you have three dots there. You can click pin to pin that screen up in the front. So that one would be uh, in front of you when we're doing the demo portion. Uh, and then we can back out of that uh, when we go back to just kind of talking about the next drink. So hopefully that works for everyone for a minute. I'm gonna try and get, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get better with the Zoom thing. But every week it seems like my plan falls through. So uh, with the hot toddy, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get our chai uh, heated. It will allow us to, these um, measurements here are for uh, two drinks. 
with this, with these type of measurements where we're making hot drinks, you can make them both at the same time, provided your vessel has the uh, ability to do that. So this is seven ounces of our chai uh, concentrate. For one drink, you really just need three and a half ounces. Uh, it's normal for there to be a little sediment on the bottom there. If you see some of that, you can just kind of swirl it up. So three and a half ounces uh, for one drink or the entire batch uh, for two. And I'm gonna start mine getting warm. Now, because there's no alcohol in this, we don't really worry about it coming to a boil. Um, once we put the tea bag in, we want that temperature to be a little bit lower. We don't really want to be boiling with our tea bag. Our tea bag, uh, we want that temperature down uh, maybe in like the 170 to 180 degree range. Uh, but before that, just the chai and water is okay to come up to a boil. This uh, honestly is my favorite drink. If I'm not feeling well, if I have a sore throat, uh, it's, it's hot toddy uh, all the time. The lemon, the honey, go ahead. I'm sorry, what did you say about water? We were, we were heating up the chai, but I missed the water part. You're heating up the chai, you don't want to, uh, there's water in with the chai. Um, oh, yeah, there's no, no additional water. Oh, okay. Uh, but just uh, about three, half of that, if you're going to do one drink or the entirety of it for two. Okay. And what's his name? And then once you get up to a, um, just under a boil, if you get to a boil, take it off the heat for a minute. And you want to let the temperature come down a little bit. And then we're going to let this steep. I really like steeping for about three minutes at about 180 degrees. It doesn't have to be uh, two bag. Yes, if you're using two drinks, use both tea bags. Um, these are, it's really just black tea. I kind of wanted to make it, it basic. If you wanted to do something different in the future, you can not use any type of tea you'd like. Um, I think something, because we're using uh, whiskey and allspice jam and this one wants something with a little more flavor. Um, so maybe like a rooibos tea or something or chai obviously would work, but something with some spice, something with some body to it. Uh, a lighter flavored tea because we're using stronger ingredients later with the whiskey and allspice jam is not going to really come through. So you want something uh, that is a little bit more flavorful. Uh, when we get into the drinks a little bit later, I will show you like the gin drink uh, that we're going to do next. For that one, you can go with a lighter flavored uh, tea um, to make that, but I would stick with something a little spicier um, here. How are we doing so far? Everyone's got this, got the tea bag steeping. Oh, no. We're still cooking the chai. Still heating up the chai, okay. Yeah. So while we're there, we'll talk a little bit about our ingredients. Um, all spice dram is probably the ingredient that is a little bit uh, foreign to, to some of you maybe. Um, this is, you will also see it called pimento dram. Um, it's really common in tiki cocktails. It adds a, a bit of spice um, to any drink. You don't need to use a lot of it uh, when you use it. Um, but if you kind of crack that open, the smell is really pungent and really delicious. Um, it might be difficult to find. It's not at every store. So if you, if you were looking for something uh, for this recipe after tonight, um, you could also use something like an Amaro, like a Verna um, would work. This would be a good, uh, more readily available substitute for the allspice dram um, if, you are, if you're looking to purchase this in the future, and this is readily available at a lot of uh, stores. After chai simmers, yeah, you're gonna pull the chai off, put the tea bags in the glass you wanna serve it in, or put it in a, a larger glass, um, and steep the chai over the tea. So if you're doing two, you could very easily put this, put both of the bags in a mixing glass, 
and make them together and then pour them separately into your mug. Since I'm just doing one for me, I just have the tea bag uh, in the mug for me. With hot cocktails, you want to make sure that your ratio is different than it would be for a regular cocktail. Uh, with a regular cocktail, you can have more alcoholic ingredients than non-alcoholic ingredients. But with, non with a hot cocktail, you want to make that ratio really at least two to one uh, in non-alcoholic ingredients to alcoholic ingredients. The reason is that you will start to smell the alcoholic ingredients uh, when you are bringing the glass up to your lips. Uh, and that will make it the sensation be uh, much more alcohol dominant than it should be. So with this, we're always looking for um, a non-alcoholic base. In our case here, it's gonna be tea. Uh, when we go to the next drink, it'll be uh, white grape juice. And lastly, we'll be doing cream and milk for the hot chocolate. So uh, when your tea bag is done steeping, yes, I can. Give me one second on repeating. When your tea bag is done steeping, you don't squeeze it out. You just pull it out, throw it out, um, and you're done. When you squeeze the tea bags, you get some bitterness from the tea leaves. You just want to leave that go um, and just, you know, the, the liquid you're going to lose from that, you just kind of um, leave in the trash. Uh, is everyone up to this this far? I have a question about repeating the two to one ratio. Uh, for, yes, for hot cocktails, it's really important to have more non-alcoholic ingredients to alcoholic ingredients. So for this recipe, you have three and a half ounces of chai, half an ounce of lemon juice and a three quarters ounce of honey simple syrup. So you have four and three quarters ounces of non-alcoholic ingredients to just two ounces of alcoholic ingredients. So we are over the two to one ratio for a non-alcoholic. Uh, if this was an alcoholic, uh, excuse me, a chilled drink, you, that, you wouldn't need that ratio to be as high because you aren't gonna be smelling the alcohol vapors when you, when you lift the glass to your lips. But because it's hot, you get those vapors on your nose and it's just too pungent. The balance is all off. It feels really um, sort, of, sort of hot uh, in, in temperature, but also in alcohol um, if you do it that way. So after we have our tea bags steeped, uh, next we're going to be adding our other ingredients. So it's a half ounce of lemon juice. three quarters of ounces of honey, simple. And if you're doing this for two and you're making it, uh, like I think some of you are making it for two, you can put them all together in one and just pour them out into two, um, into two cups. And then it's a half ounce of allspice trim. And an ounce and a half of whiskey. In this case, we're using uh, Jim Beam bourbon. I like bourbon here for the sweetness that it brings. Uh, if you wanted to go a different direction and go rye, you certainly can. If you want something a little smokier and you want to go scotch, again, all, all good answers there. Uh, there was a question about honey simple syrup. Honey simple syrup is one-to-one -one honey and, and water. Uh, you want the water to be warm, but not boiling. I really don't like boiling my honey simple syrup. Um, I kind of want to keep the, the temperature sort of as low as possible to incorporate it and make it so that there's a um, that's emulsifying. Um, and then once that is done, we're going to take our lemon peel, just a wide peel, um, and express it over the top of the glass. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but when you express the, the peel, sort of peel side out over top of the glass, you will get the essential oils coming out of the rind of the citrus. Uh, you can also sort of rub it on the on the rim if you'd like, uh, but that just gives it an extra pop of citrus uh, right at the end. Cheers. How far? How is everyone coming along with it? It's very good. Awesome. Make sure no one's waiting.
So you got a bit of spice with it, the citrus, the honey, it's, it's all there. It's delicious. I think my, I, I let mine get too cool. Okay. If you want to, you can put it back um, on whatever vessel you're using to heat it. I just wouldn't let it get too hot. Uh, so you can warm it back up, but, but try and sort of just keep it to, um, right when it starts to, like when it starts to steam a little bit, right when it, like you don't see any bubbles. If you got bubbles, you've gone a little bit too far. But you can always warm it back up. Just be careful when you get when you are reheating and you get it back up to that temperature that it's boiling. You're going to start boiling off alcohol. The lemon juice that's in there doesn't really taste great when it's warmed up that that high, and the tea is going to start to uh, to burn as well. All right. So not really too much to straighten up with this one. I sort of made everything in two, two cups. Uh, the next drink that we're going to be doing is a gin punch. Um, this one, again, the same way you can heat up the, let's see here. I feel like you have to see my fingers every time I go and touch the screen here. I'm sorry. Okay, so with the next cocktail, the gin punch, uh, we're going to be using some dry uh, ingredients, the hibiscus, chamomile, and rose hips. Uh, as a way to flavor our base, which is a combination of white grape juice and water. Um, we were talking before about with non-alcoholic ingredients, or not, excuse me, with hot cocktails, you need larger amounts of your non-alcoholic base ingredients. So we could certainly use water here, uh, but I find that white grape juice is a really nice um, base that doesn't add too much color, so you can do a, a different things with it, um, but it also brings flavor. You could use a combination of maybe a sweet wine, but I would uh, what, um, sort of dilute it down with some water. Uh, it just gets to be a little too alcoholic if you use wine plus gin. Uh, that would be a, a little bit too hot. Did I do it? I did dilute the grape juice. This is one-to-one -one water and white grape juice. It's a little bit too sweet by itself um, that I think you, you have to go one-to-one -one diluting it down. It's already diluted for you. You don't have to dilute it uh, afterwards. Is everyone up to the same point where we're talking about the next drink? Not yet. Just give us, give us a hey, little. Yes, we are. Take your time. You, and you said heat up the grape juice? Grape? Yeah. Okay. How, how so going to sell, yes. Ah, good question. There's a question about tools. Yes. I. Uh, so I am admittedly a bit of a cocktail geek. Uh, there are a couple tools that I really love, but they're special orders. So I'm ordering in, um, I believe, a dozen, two dozen of those tools that we can then make a tool equipment uh, set available to everyone, but I'm waiting for those tools to come in. Um, sometimes when you go, and I'll, and I'll show you those. Um, I'm really passionate about uh, this this bar spoon here. Um, it's weighted correctly. It has um, a, a, a stronger tip at the end here, and you have a, a better spoon on this side. Um, so I'm waiting for this spoon to come in uh, from a special order. And I like this Hawthorne strainer here. Um, the sort of the cage here on this one is a lot thicker and there's more spokes on it than there are in some of the other uh, models that are sort of cheaper and, and always available. Um, so I wanted to get those two tools in specifically for the kits um, uh, so that we can get those going. But the kit that set that I'm working on is 
this Hawthorne strainer, this spoon, uh, the Japanese style jigger here, um, a shaker set, and then this uh, mixing glass as well. I think those are the six, oh, excuse me, and a mesh strainer. So those are the, uh, just like this. So those are the tools, one, two, three, four, five, shaker set six. Those are the six tools that I'm working on putting in the kit. Okay. My hope is that they're ready for the next class um, on the 9th. That's my goal, uh, but I'm waiting to hear back from our um, supply company. All right. Everyone finished the hot toddy? Looks like I got Great. All right, so uh, just to go over the ingredient list for this one here, we have our alcohol ingredients are uh, gin and maraschino liqueur. Uh, our gin that we're using today is beef eater, um, but you could certainly use another gin. The gin is not really that specific. It can be any gin that you like. Um, I was tempted to do blue coat, uh, but I went with a more traditional one. I love blue coat. I think the citrus notes in blue coat are fantastic for cocktails. Uh, it's a different style than your London dries. Uh, blue coat being a local product uh, from Philly Distilling. Um, it's an American dry gin. Um, it's an American dry gin that you have, um, it's more citrus, less juniper. So our uh, gin we're starting off with here. Okay, so it looks like we have a packing error. Take your uh, coconut tequila, and I think we flipped them. I'm glad we caught that. Thank you, uh, Maria, for catching that. So if you look at, uh, at your coconut tequila and your gin, uh, smell them. One's gonna smell like coconuts and one's gonna smell like juniper. The one that smells like juniper is your gin. So thank you again, Maria. She wins the day for catching that. Now I got me thinking if coconut tequila would be good in the cocktail, I think it'd be good. I don't know if the gin would be good with the hot chocolate though. So that's really, that's really where you saved us. So I'm sorry, which one are we using with the fake, like the reverse? So with the with the gin punch, grab your coconut tequila and smell it. Um, it should smell like juniper. Uh, if we made our mistake with everyone, which I'm guessing we did. Yeah. We are efficient in that when we make a mistake, we don't just make a mistake for one person. We make it for everyone. <laughs> so we need the gin. <laughs> we need gin for this one. Um, and we want to save our coconut tequila for the last one. Sorry about that. And again, thank you, Maria. So um, uh, I'm sorry. Can you come again about the coconut tequila, please? So grab your coconut tequila bottle, right? And smell the smell the ingredients there. If it doesn't smell like coconut, uh, it means that that is your gin, and we made okay. a mistake in labeling. Okay, got you. All right. Yeah, you're right. This is the gin. There we go. So yeah, again, my apologies on that. Sorry about the the mix up there. Thank you for catching it. So. Um, that is our gin for this drink. And then we have uh, maraschino liqueur, which is like a, a cherry liqueur. We're gonna be using honey and lemon juice again. And then we have our white grape juice. And then our dry ingredients in this one are uh, chamomile, uh, hibiscus, and rose hips. I really like using whole flower chamomile uh, for any time that I'm making any tea or anything like this versus using like sometimes chamomile tea bags, they, they strip the tea, the chamomile down so much that you have like shredded chamomile. That's not my favorite. I'm looking for, for something like this where you see the, you see the whole flowers. To me, it's just much more uh, pungent. I get a better flavor. I get a better aroma. Uh, and then you have hibiscus and rose hips there. which I think are going to give us a nice uh, additional floor and the hibiscus, the color that we're going to get from the, from the dried hibiscus, it's going to be uh, a beautiful sort of pinkish 
uh, that I think is a nice addition as well. So I am going to be making this drink uh, in a back pot or a coffee siphon. Because I just like messing around with a bunch of different tools. So that's what we're going to start off with here. Now, you can split this up if you'd like, or you can just make two uh, together. Uh, I am going to make both of them. I'm going to make two drinks for this one. So the double batch. So you want to start off with just heating up your white grape juice. And just while we're talking about, the reason we're not heating anything else up to start, um, I don't want to heat up the liquor because I don't want to burn off any of the alcohol. I don't want to heat up the fruit juice because I, I don't, I like the citrus to be um, just a little bit lower in temperature um, than I would get by boiling it. Uh, and I don't want to put in the honey simple syrup because I don't want to get anything on the, on the side of the pot uh, that I'm using that's going to sort of burn the sugar uh, in the honey simple syrup. So, we're just going to do the, our base liquid here um, to start off with. So I, there was a question about what this is. This is a back pot or a coffee siphon. Um, it's just a, a fun tool that we have uh, that, yes, back take our with. That's what everybody makes fun of me for. Same just like this weird chemist that likes messing with things. Yes, this is very much a, a chemistry thing. So uh, what it does is you put your liquids in the bottom here and then I'm going to turn this camera a little bit and so that you, way you can see the entirety of our operation here. Uh, and then you put what you want to steep up in the top. As we heat the bottom, it's going to um, go, because of the vacuum seal in the bottom chamber, it's going to go up the tube into the top, steep with the ingredients that we have in the top. And then when we remove the heat from the bottom, it'll come back down, steeped with those ingredients, and it strains through a um, mesh strainer right here. So this is just another way of uh, uh, sort of steeping and making our tea. Uh, it's usually used for coffee where you would put grounds in the top and water in the bottom uh, and then steep uh, your coffee that way. So I like using it for, for hot drinks and tea. Um, so let's get the white grape juice on the stove. And what I'm going to do is I'm putting my all of my chamomile up in the top here. I'm putting all of my hibiscus and the rose hips in the top. So we put that in the pot? Yes. So you want to do with the with the ingredients that you're doing there, you can just let's see. You want to definitely put the hibiscus and the rose hips in there because they are hard. The chamomile is fine uh, in there as long as you don't leave it on a, on a boil. Um, you want to get it to that temperature, take it off the heat, and let it steep. But you can put it all in the pot, and we'll just strain it out uh, straight after. I'm also going to put a couple peels of citrus. Up top here. All right, so right now we have white grape juice uh, warming up. You have chamomile, rose hips, hibiscus, and I have some citrus peel. If you can do the citrus peel as well, fantastic. And I'm going to put the uh, spurs to mine and get that liquid on the bottom uh, heating up. And I'm also going to grab my glass that we'll be serving in, so that's ready when this is done. Yes, if anybody has their, you can definitely use a saucepan. If anyone ha is, um, after you, if you ask a question, great, but if you're done with the question, uh, definitely try to mute your um, microphone. 
Uh, you may also get some feedback from the flame down the bottom here. It might sound like feedback, but it's just my torch. Why is ours red and yours is yellow? If you put the hibiscus in, it's going to turn red. Once my uh, yellow steeps with the hibiscus up top, it will turn red as well. So it's just the, the color from the hibiscus. It really gives it a bright uh, red color that we're looking for. Yours just has reacted with the hibiscus. Mine has not uh, until it comes up to the top. Could you say with the substitute for all spice and dram? Again, sure. Um, my substitute for all spice dram is Averna. This is an Italian Amaro. Um, not quite as spicy uh, as the allspice dram is, but it has similar flavor, flavor characteristics um, and readily available. For some reason, our state stores don't like bringing in allspice dram. Uh, it drives me crazy. Now, there are a couple good brands of it. Bitter Truth does one that I like. St. Elizabeth does another one. So uh, for mine, you kind of can see how the color is going to react um, as it comes through the top here. So we're going to let this steep up here. Um, the temperature is not as hot on the top as it is on the bottom. So I'm not as worried. And just the aroma on this. I have a couple of things that I really like uh, in, in hot cocktails because of the way that it makes the room smell. Um, chamomile is one of them. Uh, passion fruit is another. Warm passion fruit takes me back to culinary school. This is a back pot or a coffee siphon. So as you see, the color on the bottom here is turning that pink color that we were talking about. We've steeped with our chamomile, our citrus peel. And now I'm gonna turn off my heat. And with this, you don't need a long steeping time. Uh, the chamomile is really going to uh, give it its flavor pretty quickly. The hibiscus is going to give it its flavor and color. Uh, the rose hips are, there's not too much coming from the rose hips. It's more just a hint of that rose uh, aroma uh, that I really like. And I'm just going for a couple of different um, floral notes uh, with this cocktail. So with my equipment here, I can just, it all automatically takes away our ingredients. If you are doing it where you have the chamomile and you need a, you may need to use a strainer to strain out your uh, ingredients there as well. So I have this ready. One thing we could do differently for this one, and there was someone that mentioned on the last one that your drinks got cold. We can add the hot part in last and try and keep this as warm as possible while we're talking. Uh, that way, um, when we're catching up, everything is, is in the glass and we're just pouring hot drinks over top of it. So why don't we try that instead this time? So with this, if you're doing a double batch, remember to double your recipe here on the side. So we're going to have a half ounce uh, for one or one whole ounce of lemon juice uh, for two drinks. Uh, an ounce and a half of honey simple for two drinks. And then we have our maraschino liqueur, which will be one ounce for two drinks. And then lastly, our gin, labeled on the wrong thing, covered in tequila uh, label, but it's gin, and that will be three ounces for two drinks. Not really much mixing that needs to go on here. Um, everything is, is liquid, so by pouring it over top, everything is good. So we're just going to pour our 
chamomile, hibiscus, white grape, drink over top. And that is what we're looking for here. That beautiful pink color. As floral notes, the gin comes off the, uh, comes at the end. You get a, that, that bit of herbaceousness from the gin, but it's not overwhelming. All right. Any questions about this one? Seeing some great comments in the in the chat. So thank you very much for everyone there. Hi. Hello. Hi. I, I forget your name. What's your name? My name is Len. Len. Yes. Oh, hi, Len. Um, I'm looking at the piece of paper that you gave us with the kit, mm -hmm. and it where where it says recipe. Yep. Is that recipe for one drink or is that a recipe for two drinks? That is for one drink. I sh and in the future, I will name that and title that recipe for one. Okay, good. That was a confusion at our end. All right, yeah. that's good. So all of these recipes are one drink recipes. Yeah, when it says recipe, unless it's something like for the next one, when we get to the hot chocolate, um, I just did hot chocolate as one thing total. Okay. So there's not a recipe there. We're just going to make two drinks together. Um, I didn't think it made sense to sort of split those up. Um, but for everything else, if you see the ingredients in the kit, that is essentially two drinks and recipe is one drink. Um, has been the way sort of I've been doing it in my head, but I need to um, make that a little more clear for everyone. Awesome. Yeah, gin is, um, I know gin is not everyone's favorite. Um, I do take it as a responsibility of mine to try and open more people's eyes to gin. Um, last week we were talking about mezcal. So this, I sort of view it the same way in a sense that um, I want to give people an experience to try something new. Uh, almost everyone has had vodka at some point. If you have a recipe that has vodka in it, there's a good chance that you can substitute vodka for something else. And most of the time, gin is going to be a, an easy one-to-one -one swap. Um, not to knock vodka, but vodka to me is a little like cooking with water. Um, I can use that or I can add some more flavor to it. And gin is my favorite way to add flavor to it. Uh, tequila works in a lot of uh, vodka cocktails, swapping it out. Swap, swapping it out. Uh, but I really like to open people's eyes to gin. Um, if you are not a gin fan and you want to try um, gin drinks in the future, Blue Coat, because it's an American dry gin, has less juniper and I think is a good starter gin for people. Uh, another one that um, I would recommend is Bar Hill. Uh, they are a gin that um, it's just a mixture of juniper and honey. They're out of Vermont. That is a delicious gin uh, to start off with. Um, as well, it's marash maraschino uh, syrup. So maraschino is a uh, liqueur. Um, I don't have the bottle with me. The, some stores have Luxardo brand, uh, which is a green bottle, red cap, and this like uh, straw uh, labeling uh, around it. Uh, that's a popular brand of the Luxardo. I use um, Vergnano uh, maraschino. Um, I like it a little better, but it is, special liquor order, so you would not see that one in the stores. Uh, but Luxardo Maraschino liqueur should be in most stores uh, in PA. Maraschino, a total, if you go to Total Wine, you have a good chance of seeing, you definitely should see Maraschino liqueur as a Total Wine. Um, but for us folks stuck in Pennsylvania, um, unwilling to break interstate laws, you can't really go there. All right. So our last cocktail of the day is going to be our hot chocolate. Did someone just admit to breaking interstate laws on the chat? You have to... Anyway, um, so with our hot chocolate, we have, I'm gonna go through our ingredient list quickly. So coconut tequila. Um, I really like coconut tequila. Um, 
in this preparation, uh, I think that um, I'm usually not one for a ton of flavored uh, ingredients, but coconut is something that I am open to using a, a flavored uh, liquor like this because the flavor is so spot on. Um, it's a, a sweet coconut flavor that I'm looking for uh, in this drink and I think most people are looking for, but the proof is not so sweet. Uh, it's not Malibu sweet. Um, this, I believe, is, is 80 proof. It's not 80, it's, it's up there. Uh, so it's not, it has the sweetness on the nose without it being sweet candy-like uh, flavor. Uh, so this is 1800 uh, coconut tequila. Uh, we're gonna be using Irish cream as well. That's Bailey's. Uh, just to skip ahead to the other uh, liquid ingredients, uh, we have uh, milk and heavy cream seven ounces of each. And then we have a bunch of dry ingredients. So this uh, recipe is much closer to a, a, like a baking recipe uh, in the way that we're going to be doing it. Let me just pull everything up here. And we'll talk a little bit about each of them. Uh, so salt uh, is kosher salt. We are not gonna need all that you were given. Um, so you just have that there. I just want to make sure we're using the same salt. Um, sometimes if you see salt and like we're using a pinch of kosher salt, a pinch of kosher salt and a pinch of iodized salt is going to be uh, a different um, level of salt. So uh, that's why I wanted everybody to have the kosher salt there. Uh, sugar. We have espresso powder. Um, if I'm baking or if I'm using uh, chocolate in any way, um, I am going to add just a pinch. Uh, this one for our recipe today is going to be a teaspoon of this espresso powder. Um, that's it's not going to give it a coffee flavor, but it really accents the chocolate um, in the recipe. So anytime I'm doing baked goods, if I'm doing chocolate cookies, if I'm doing brownies, there's going to be espresso powder added to my recipe. Usually just about a teaspoon of it, uh, and it just really enhances the flavor. Uh, we have some dark chocolate chips. And then we have two different cocoa powders. Um, you have natural processed cocoa powder and you have Dutch processed cocoa powder. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because we want a depth of flavor um, with as much complexity in the chocolate as we can. So we're doing two different types of chocolate, of, of cocoa powder. Um, if you are not familiar with cocoa powder, let me just do a quick brief, um, as best I can description in cocoa. Uh, powder, uh, Samantha go gentle on me. Uh, so you have natural cocoa powder. This is let's see. You won't if you if you just it, so I'm sorry. There's a chat. Uh, there's a chat question about reheating. If you just go on the stove top uh, for a minute and just take it off before it gets to boil, you should be fine. Um, uh, if you wanted to put a thermometer in there, if you have a, a kitchen thermometer, you can do that and just kind of keep it in that 170 to 180 range. Um, you shouldn't ruin it by doing that. If you went and boiled it for five minutes, yes, that would ruin it. If you get it up before, right before boil, you should be fine. Uh, to get back to cocoa powders here. So you have two different cocoa powders. The lighter colored cocoa powder is your natural colored cocoa powder, or natural cocoa powder. Uh, this is Hershey's. Um, it's basically what you see on the shelves, uh, what I think you've seen for a long time on the shelves. Um, this is, if you try it, like if you just sort of like, like the easiest way, like if you just want to take a little bit of this, um, don't take a lot of it, but if you taste it, you will taste a little bit of astringency and a little bit of bitterness uh, in this chocolate uh, from the way that it's processed. Um, let me just take my notes so I don't say anything that's incorrect here. So with chocolate, they're going to ferment cocoa beans, and then you take the, the nibs from that and ground them to extract the cocoa butter and, and chocolate liqueur. You then take the chocolate liqueur and dry it and ground that into a powder, and that is our cocoa powder. That is natural cocoa powder. That is the standard uh, process. It's a little bit bitter uh, and a little bit astringent, uh, but it is it's very flavorful. Um, if you are, if you see Dutch process, what that has 
done is it has been the cocoa beans are treated with alkali uh, during the production process to neutralize the natural acidity. Uh, it darkens the color, but it does make the chocolate flavor a little bit more mild. So some of the flavor is stripped away, but it's something like if you if you taste the Dutch process by itself right now, you can taste it. It's not really too bitter or astringent in your in your mouth. Um, just as a as an aside for it, if you're looking, if you see it in recipes, um, you will see either alkali process with alkali Dutch or Dutch chocolate. Um, and if you just see natural, that's what we're looking for here with the, with the Hershey's. Um, one other way to that I see it for recipes is if the recipe has baking soda in it, it more than likely needs natural cocoa powder. If it has baking powder in the recipe, uh, that would more than likely be a uh, Dutch process. But you need the, for the most part for natural, you need the, um, the baking soda and it reacts with the baking soda uh, to give it the, the leaven you need, the flavor that you need, uh, so it doesn't fall flat. So hope I didn't bore everyone with the, with the amateur chocolate lesson. Uh, so we're gonna get our mixing bowl and we're gonna add in uh, both cocoa powders. A teaspoon of the espresso powder. all of the sugar, and then just a pinch of the salt. Don't go, don't go crazy, just a pinch. And it's really just a, to and then brighten some flavors up. And I'm just sort of combining everything that we have here. All right, so one of the issues that sometimes you run into when making uh, hot chocolate is that you have uh, lumps created. So we're going to try and avoid that by taking uh, two ounces of our milk, mixing that with our powders here, and creating a paste uh, that we're gonna then pour our hot ingredients over later. So let's hold off on that. Let's set aside, actually let's just pour it in here now. Let's make it easy and then we'll come back to how we get our, our cream going. So we have our powder mixtures here. We're gonna pour in two ounces of milk. And then we're just gonna set this aside for a second. And then in our sauce pot, we're going to pour the rest of our milk and all of our cream. We're going to get this going. Now, for just the first couple seconds, we're going to let that go. But after that, I want to kind of keep a, 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 a either a spatula to it to make sure that we're not burning uh, the cream. But in the meantime, we're going to take our paste here and just do a quick whisk together. Are you just about, are you supposed to stick all the salt in, or just some of the salt? No, just a pinch of the salt. Now I put all the salt in. Oh, yeah. How can I make it not salty? Um, More sugar? Um, I don't know if that's going to be savable. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's, what do you have? Do you have any cocoa powder in your house? Yes. Yes. Why, why don't we just start from scratch with the cocoa powder that you have in your house instead of trying to save that? Unfortunately, I think that if you dumped in all the salt, uh, that's going to be, it's, uh, I don't know if that's savable. Okay. okay. All right. Thanks. Of course. So if anybody, like we can do that together, uh, just grab your, um, your tablespoon measurement um, and we'll, we'll get that going. So uh, this is what we're looking for here with the paste. Uh, and then if anybody did pour their 
for the entire thing. So let me know when you're ready and we'll talk through making a new batch of dry ingredients. You'll need your cocoa powder. Uh, you'll need sugar and salt. If you have espresso powder, great. If you don't, you can omit the espresso powder just fine. Um, it's not going to ruin the drink or anything. It's just a little bit of a, of a difference in flavor. Same thing with the cocoa powders. If you only have one type of cocoa powder, perfectly fine. Um, it doesn't need to be there. The thing that's important with that is getting the right ratio of sugar to cocoa powder. So we have our milk and cream simmering on the stove top or coming to a simmer. Yes, there's some questions about using different milks. Um, you can use almond milk, you can use oat milk. Um, the texture is going to be fine substituting those for regular milk. However, you will have a little bit of a texture difference if you omit the cream. Um, and again, I'm somebody that tries to do as many recipes as possible with milk substitutes. To, to make them dairy free as best as possible. Um, however, it gets really difficult to do that when you're avoiding heavy cream. Um, so I know there's some, there's some cream, I know there's coconut cream out there that you could use uh, so you can get the thickness of uh, heavy cream. Uh, but this one, I think, I think the dairy version is uh, sort of the standard here. Okay. Do you need whole milk? Um, it is whole milk. It doesn't have to be. You again, most of the, these ingredients will allow you to sort of alternate a little bit. Uh, when you bring your milk, by the way, if your cream comes to a boil, you want to take it off. Once it comes to a boil, you're done. If you leave it on, you have a, the the possibility of overflowing the pot um, or burning the milk. This is a if you did it right, it should sort of take you back to your childhood and you get the warm milk smell. Uh, that is fantastic. Uh, for the people that made their, that, that dumped in the salt, how are you doing with making a new dry batch? We're now watching. Okay. <laughs> if you want to, after we're done, I'm happy to work through it with you together. All right. So the last ingredient that we haven't had so far, we have our chips. We're going to put our chips in with our uh, paste. And then we're going to pour our hot mixture over top. Now, as vigorously as you can stir this without spilling it, uh, you want to do that as quickly as possible because you want to use the heat that you have here to uh, melt everything down. After the first couple, there's really not going to be much that needs to be whisked in. Uh, you can also use your, your spatula and make sure that you're getting uh, the paste off of all of the sides of the pot, or all the sides of the bowl, excuse me. And then we want to get this um, in our cup as quickly as possible so we can, it can stay warm. So we're going to add, for this, it's all of your liquors, uh, but it's one ounce of, of Bailey's, the cream liqueur, and then it's three ounces of coconut liqueur. And just give that a quick whisk together. Grab our... go. And that is enough for two servings. Now, I'm not much for, for gussing this up with marshmallows or anything like that, but you, if you like that thing, sort of thing, you certainly can. Um, I think we are ready to go, personally. This recipe also works fine, in my opinion, without the liquor. It's on the darker side, uh, which is what I'm going for. If you want it to be a little sweeter, 
feel free to add a little bit of sugar. It's still warm enough now that you can just add a little bit of sugar now uh, and sweeten it up if you'd like. But that to me, um, you get the coconut uh, light in there. The tequila isn't uh, dominant. I say about apple something? I don't know if I said apple something. I, don't know, I apologize if I misspoke there. I said marshmallow something. How are we doing so far on the hot chocolate? Any questions? Anyone, anyone get this far? Okay. There we go. At least got some people that have, have had the drink. That's an amazing hot chocolate. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Did anyone, I know we have the, the a couple people that had the salt issue and I'm, I'm not forgetting. We'll definitely get back. Uh, it is 1800 coconut, the tequila. Yes. And that is available in most stores. You can use a different tequila. You can use uh, vodka if you'd like. You can use um, you can use uh, a whiskey, I believe. Uh, it'll be a little bit different. Um, you might need a little bit more sugar if you did. So the coconut tequila is giving it a little bit of sweetness. Uh, and I did sort of make this recipe with that in mind. So if you used a different liquor that didn't have as much sweetness, you may need to add a little bit more sugar to it, um, but not too much. Um, so aside from the folks, coconut rum. Yeah, absolutely. Um, be careful with Malibu. Um, if you use Malibu in place of the coconut tequila, it is sweeter, so you might wanna pull back on your sugar. Thank you very much, that is uh, quite the compliment. He drank the Irish cream straight up instead. Perfect. Uh, we we're going out shopping to get the ingredients since you salted it up. Okay. Um, so just a, just a quick thing on it here. You do have the recipes in the kit um, for the folks with the salt, um, or if anybody, for, for making the, the dry ingredients there, two tablespoons of each of the cocoa powders or four tablespoons of a one of the cocoa powders. Um, if you go all natural, you may need a touch more sugar because the um, the Dutch process is not as bitter, so the sugar content there um, is made for this recipe. So there are some tweaks that if you adjust the recipe a little bit, you may need to play around with. It's really just the sweetness that you'll need to play around with. But let's say you did um, all natural cocoa powder. I think you may want to go one to one and do four teaspoons of sugar, four teaspoons, or excuse me, four tablespoons of sugar, four tablespoons of natural. Um, just depends on, on what you like in terms of your sweetness level. I like something on the darker side. Um, same thing with the chips. If you want to use, um, if you want to use the, um, uh, like a milk chocolate chip, that's certainly fine. Um, it doesn't need to be dark chocolate. That's just my preference on the chips uh, to use. Awesome. Well, thank you to everyone. Uh, again, any hesitate, any questions, don't hesitate. Uh, and for the folks that are making their hot chocolate a little later, let me know if, if you need help. We can we can build it together. <laughs> 